Over 10 million cosmetic procedures are performed a year in the U.S., and that's just the reported ones. There are tens of thousands of people that are getting plastic surgery from unlicensed black market doctors with terrible and sometimes tragic and deadly results. Shakia says that her black market plastic surgery nightmare almost killed her and left her body deformed and scarred for life. What surgery did you want? What did you want to change? I wanted to make my butt big and my hips a little wider. And so you did your research? Yes. And you found out that there are, there is an implant, uh, uh, one that has been passed, that yes. is used. Tell us about that one that you heard about. Um, I actually wasn't even thinking about any type of surgery before my boyfriend introduced it to me. He said a lot of strippers in Florida, they, they get the hydrogel injections and the video girls, they get the injections and it's all natural. Or you can take a chicken pill and it's like a steroid that they give chickens to make it, but it's for chicken, and they, it makes your, your butt bigger if you're a human, and I said no. So he was talking about the hydrogel, and I said, I'll research it, and that's when I found, I Googled it, and I found the forum, and I found injections, and I chose to do the injections. It's more natural than this, the implants. It's hard. It's not like breast implants. It's a hard. It's a solid thing, and it's, a butt implant. It's solid, and it's like a tear shape, not like a round shape, and I didn't want that at all. And But you've heard that the plastic surgeons do the implant. Yes, the that's butt legal. Implant, but the plastic surgeons do not do hydrogel. No. So you found out that, that hydrogel was illegal. Yes. Okay, so you found this person that said they'll do this hydrogel. So you go to Orlando. You fly to Orlando, right? And uh, who do you go with? I go alone. You go by yourself? You can't have anybody in the room with you at all. Okay, that's what they said? Yeah. Okay, they said nobody in there with you. Okay, and the doctor shows up. Was it a doctor? Um, when you go on the forum, they tell you that it's a registered nurse, and that's what they tell you. You go on the forum, and you post your information. You can't contact them. They have to contact you. You can't contact them? No. Was that a red flag? No. It's, not a red flag? It's that illegal. You can't Oh, so you, you knew that it was illegal. Yeah, I knew. So it was not a red flag because it's illegal. Yeah. <laughs> so duh. There was no like, there's no billboard for drug dealers like this. Woo! She yeah. knew it was really dirty. Yeah. Okay. Did you take painkillers or anything or um, anesthesia? I was worried about the pain, and she told me to take two Percocets beforehand, about a half hour beforehand, so that I, the pain would, would be bearable. She said you're still gonna fail it. How but did the you pain get a Percocet? Bearable. You have to get that. I have um, scoliosis, so oh, okay. you have I'm some on pain from your scoliosis. Yeah. And but I didn't get a chance to take the painkillers. So then she started, and um, tell me about how many needles did she use? Um, well, first when she she came into the room, I, I opened the door. The appointment was at four o'clock. I was supposed to take the Percocet at three thirty. She came at two o'clock. She knocked on the door. I opened the door. She just rushed in. I didn't invite her, and I didn't know who she was. I never saw a picture of her in my life. She busted in the room, and she looked through the room to make sure nobody was there. She called her security team, and she told them that nobody was in the room, and she was going to stop. I thought I was scared because I didn't get a chance to take the Percocet, and I was scared about the pain. And she said, well, by the time you were like, into it, the painkillers will kick in, and you'll be so all right. So just take them now? Yep, take them now. And so you took your clothes off. You lay on the bed in the yeah, hotel room? You lay on the bed. She mocks you off 20 X's, 10 on each side, and then she sticks these long needles into the X's. Uh-huh. And then she takes the syringe and puts it, the liquid in, and then she screws it onto the needle, and she pushes it in. What did it feel like? It felt like fire, like, um, you feel pressure and then you feel like explosion and then it doesn't go away and the more she did the more it hurt to where it just felt like somebody was just stabbing my backbone and uh, I kept on telling her I was like I can't take it anymore um, I want to stop and she's like you know everybody on the forum is knows that you're coming to me so I don't want to put my name on like half work and we only did this side we have to finish this side and if you if you need a break we'll give you a break but we have to finish like I can't put my name on this work right now Wow. so you said okay and so she finished? No. You, no, you couldn't, the pain was too much. So you had to stop? After two hours, I stopped. How long was the procedure supposed to last? 45 minutes. And it was two hours? And how much did she get through, one bun or both? Half? One and a half. One and a half. Okay, so the next day, you're at the airport, and then something happens with your vision. What happens? Um, when I got, out, I got off the shuttle, and they bring you right in front of the airport, and um, I'm getting off the shuttle and I'm I'm looking and it it just like it's dark like it's the darkness is closing in on my eyes so I asked them if I can have a wheelchair because there was a wheelchair right there and they let me so I'm going through the sliding doors and I was so embarrassed I didn't even want them to push me so I'm going through the sliding doors pushing yourself myself 
and I'm overworked and the lady, I'm, I'm so tired. And the lady was like, can I help you? And she took my ticket, but she walked away. And I couldn't tell her that I, I need help right now. <laughs> and um, I knew it was over, like I knew I was gonna die. So I called my stepmother and I told her that something was wrong and that if something happens, tell my kids that I love them and that I worked hard and that's why I was doing this. I wasn't doing it in vain. I just wanted to make more money with my profession. <laughs> and um, that was it. Like I, when I finally opened my eyes, like. I was on the ground in the airport and there was all these people like around me pricking me and I had vital sign things on and, and all these people were on me and then I went back and when I woke up I was in the hospital and that's it. I don't remember anything in between. You don't remember anything and now then you got, you were in the hospital and they didn't really know what was wrong. They let you go home and then a couple of days after surgery, you know, you couldn't breathe. It felt like someone was sitting on your chest. Yeah. Um, they, at the hospital, they said I was, I was just dehydrated and they gave me antibiotics for cellulitis. I told them about the surgery and they said it was just cellulitis. We're going to give you antibiotics so that it doesn't get affected. And I told my, my stepmom, I was like, something's wrong. You know, I'm really sick. I'm really tired. I can't even make the kids cereal in the morning. Can you please watch them? And she took them on Saturday and on Sunday, I woke up and I couldn't breathe. I couldn't catch my breath. I was laying down. There was no reason for me to be out of breath. I couldn't catch my breath and I, my heart was pounding and I just called 911 and uh, they were taking too long. So I had my neighbor bring me and I went to the, the, the emergency room. That's and I'm trying to tell them what's going on and they're not registering and not listening to me and I'm getting so tired from talking. I was like, listen, I need to sit down. You have to like, let me sit down. So they brought me in and they took my vitals and they just rushed me to the back. Like they didn't take, they didn't take my name, anything, no ID, no nothing. They was like, get her to the back. I had a fever of 104. They said my vitals were through the roof. Six doctors rushed in the room. They, they couldn't find out. They couldn't find out what was wrong. They yeah. couldn't get me down. They put my feet in ice, everything. They couldn't help we're, me. We're going to take a break. And um, when we come back, we're going to talk about um, what happened when she went into that emergency room because they had to cut her butt open. They had to slice her open. We'll be right back. Mm -hmm.